Good afternoon, ladies and gentle pugs. It is I, your lord, the King Pug Gaming, and welcome back to episode 4 of this Let's Play the Thoria Mod Season 1. And of course, you can tell that we're jumping right back into the mod by crafting more of these sweet aqua eye bars. Surely, we will get a lot. Oh, hi there, pink slimy. And that's 42. That should be enough for quite a bit of stuff. Hello, behemoths. Oh, money collector. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Now I won't have to worry about losing anything. Thanks, bro. Now, of course, we're gonna start by crafting the Depth Diver's armor set. Depth Diver's chest plate. Depth. Stupid, Stupid magic, magic mirror. mirror! This may not be enough for the yo yo, but who cares? Depth Diver's greaves. Yeah, we had just enough bars left for the helmet. And bam, there we go. 23 defense compared to 20. Not a big improvement, but eh, who cares. Depth Diver's Helmet. Six defense. Become a selfless predator. Critical strike chance increased by 6%. You and all nearby allies can breathe underwater. Set bonus, you gain each of your emanating effects as well. What? Depth Diver's Chestplate. Seven defense. Become a selfless protector. Nearby allies gain 10% increased damage. And Depth Diver's Greaves. Seven percent. 7 defense and become a selfless protector. Nearby allies gain 10% increased movement speed. Cool. So, this doesn't look like a half bad armor set. But unfortunately, I'm out of bars, so I might as well go back to the aquatic depths biome and, you know, get some more because there are weapons I really want to craft. But is it true? With this armor, can I breathe underwater? I can! Heck yeah! And of course, while off camera, I did notice this. The artery yo-yo from the Crimson is a material for a Knight's Edge like yo-yo, but Crimson version, the Sanguine. And of course, it requires all four yo-yos from their respective places, the Jungle, the Crimson, the Dungeon, and the Underworld. If you were making the Corruption version, you would need the Corruption yo-yo. And all the things needed are not that hard to get. Well, well, well. Look who we got here. Better stay out of my sight or the same thing will happen again, Squirrel Demon. Hello, Mahogany Ant. Very natural and not very suspicious enemy. Oh, and you poisoned me. Oh, I'm so scared. So scared of a jungle monster. All your drop are just some petals and rich mahogany. Hello, man eater. What, y'all? I'm, I'm not, not getting, getting off track. track. I'm just prepared for that awesome yo-yo I found earlier. And... Can you check that flower that looks, that looks just like the like was told? Ain't that just, just great? Alright, that was everything. Now let's go back to the aquatic depths. Hey there, Rain. I sure missed you. And yeah, if you're wondering about these two water-like buffs over here, this is the effect of the, of, of the Depth Diver's armor set. A puffer fish. I've never seen you in this biome before. <laughs> yeah, right, never. And it drops bomb fish when killed, and depth scales. Cool, cool, but not what I'm after. And here's something to learn for anyone that's new to this mod. The further you go into the aquatic depth biome, the more dangerous the enemies become. And ow, that Giga Clam hurt a lot with its pearls. I did not expect it to deal that much damage for a pre harbor trash mob. And hello, Mr. Moray Eel. Good to see you again. And you're dead. Well, well, are the best. best. And I can't lie, the Hydro Pickaxe is very efficient while you're submerged in liquid. And there. That should be the last of this ore. It was very easy to get. Well, let's ignore the fact that I'm almost dead. Uh, all right now, it's time to convert all the aqua hype ore, ore we got back into bars. And we have it up for 17. Cool. So my calculation should be correct on the number of bars we need for these weapons. Specifically, the Pearl Pike. 25 melee damage, 10% crit chance, average speed, average knockback. Successfully hitting an enemy will increase your movement speed. And to make it, you need 8 aqua bars and 15 pearls. Normal spear, cool. Illustrious, 27 melee damage, 20% crit chance, fast speed, weak knockback. No more info. Also like the pearl bike, except it has a different crafting recipe. But you still need 8 aqua bars, but 12 pearls instead of 15. 
I love this yo-yo. And also, let's just go ahead and craft Amazon Prime. Very funny joke. For that awesome yo-yo, two down, two left to go. And I know how to get them easily. Let's check out the Pearl Pike because we got a blue slime right next to the base. Not bad, and wow, we do move a lot faster when we kill an enemy. It even works on critters. Perfect. No more troubles while killing, killing squirrel demons. demons. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm doing here. This is what we're going for today. The queen jellyfish. Ultimate preparations finished. Now, let's go kill this jellyfish. And of course, I get two summoning items just in case I messed up. And I found the first one in the aquatic depths, second one crafted off camera. So, we should be fine. I'm not gonna lie. The illustrious yo-yo from the Thoria mod reminds me so much of the probe yo-yo from the spirit mod. Except there's no lines running to the middle and the center is not red. But maybe it's called illustrious because when it's swung, the yo-yo can create some very cool looking optical illusions. The range on this yo-yo could use a bit of work, but... Either way, it's still a really good yo-yo. And a viable option for mid-range combat if you're in pre-hard mode. Once you explore the aquatic depths biome. After or before you kill the brain of Cthulhu. Y'all ready? Here goes nothing. The queen jellyfish has a wolf hit. Uh, okay, there's someone stuck inside of the thing. Looks like we should help them. care how much else I have. Star Fury for the win. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's how we do it. The Queen Jellyfish has been defeated. Okay, I'm gonna ask if we all die, because that sound effect is just annoying now. But man, that was a really intense fight. I almost died. The Queen Jellyfish is definitely one of my most favorite bosses from this mod so far. Treasure back time. A nasty jelly pod wand. Guarding sea breeze pendant. Wearers of this pendant shall, fear, shall not fear the depths. Increases your breath by 50% and grants the ability to swim. Increases your damage by 10% when you're wet. Cool. And hello, Neil. Visiting that sea rift again wasn't my best idea. That mutant jellyfish almost ate me whole. Hmm. Oh. Very interesting. And the ancient ocean armor. Cool. And we can get shark fins and corals from him. All nice. But let's check out the jelly pond wand. Oh, it's a magic weapon. That's practically useless for me. But I had fun against this boss nonetheless. So, so I'll kill, kill her. Again! Again! Okay, side note. When the queen jellyfish launches that giant bubble, try and get out as quickly as possible. Otherwise... You might die from fall damage. And that is never a good thing when fighting this boss. Shut up with the spitting jellyfish! I hate that sound! Remember when I said the queen jellyfish was hard? Hey y'all, I was just kidding. This is very easy. Star Fury for the freaking win! Yeah, boy. 
Now, treasure bag. Queen's glow stick creates an endless amount of glow sticks, and we got the same weapon again. Come on, I don't need that. But the best thing about killing this boss. <laughs> it's possible that we can buy a summoning item from an NPC. We don't know which one yet. But we'll see. Is it the merchant? Nine. The painter? Nine. The desert acado? Nine. But he did sell something new. Nightshade flower. Your damage increases poison and venom damage over time. Greatly. The cobbler. Do you sell it? Nine. Oh. Yes! Does the blacksmith sell it? Nine. The chef. Does he sell it? Nine. The dryad. Does she sell it? Nine. But she does sell amphibian eggs and the summoning items for both King Slime and the Eye of Cthulhu. Not what I necessarily need. The goblin tinkerer. Does he sell it? Nine. None of my NPCs sell the jellyfish resonator. Ain't that perfect? I killed it for nothing. Nothing but pain and torture. Hey, my first blood moon. This is a big surprise. And now it is happening. Time to see what's, what new stuff can happen during a blood moon in pre-heart mode. Hey, biter. Oh, we got a mini boss. The patch work. Okay, slow down. There you go. Slow down, cool. Oh, and it's a handle. Oh, we got bloody eyes now. Where is that coming from? Is the patchwork spawning that hand? Oh, custom hit sounds. Can we have that in every Terraria mod, please? That would be just wonderful. Sadly to say, this enemy boss is surprisingly easy to kill. The dreshed patchwork was has been removed from the world. Intense Grave Buster. Severed hand? Creates a wave of grasping bones. I'm not changing classes for that! We're also getting unholy shards. I think this is the key to summoning the next boss. Purified shards? I don't know. Okay, this is healer stuff, so... Basically useless to me. What a shame. But apparently I overlooked something. The patchwork actually drops two stuff. Besides that one, this great buster. Also the good book. Heals ally life by two. Okay, it's best used for multiplayer, it seems. Not for single player. Oh, hello, we got an abomination. And you, sir, are definitely an abomination. And you also spawn severed hands when killed. Hello, Mr. Money Truck. Oh, great. I'm now gonna resummon Baum's greatest enemy. The Peacekeeper and the Groove. There we go. And of course, I did not forget about my undying will to get revenge on the brain of Cthulhu. So, let's do that. Stupid Goblin Army! Alright, there we go. Alright, let's head back, open up. Oh, I, I forgot, forgot Goblin, Goblin Army! Let's kill them! You will pay greatly for murdering the Goblin Tinkerer behind my back! That's right! Now you better stay out of my way! Otherwise, things will be more bloodier than this encounter! Okay, let's calm down. Treasure bag! And we got nothing helpful. Rate of confusion in this version of Terraria is useless! Muda, 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 muda! When else watching me? Oh my god, he said a JoJo reference! So now this is gonna be it for this episode. We have quite the crazy one. Almost died a few times, especially against the second modded boss monster, which I think was fantastic, especially for a post-brain of Cthulhu slash Peter Wolf's boss. It is very dangerous and something you should gratefully prepare for. Otherwise, you're gonna get ripped apart very easily. So until we meet again next time, I hope y'all have enjoyed watching me lose my sanity. And as always, thanks for watching y'all. Have a nice day and stay fantastic.